Someone screamed, the devil is in trouble. In the body of Christ in Nigeria, there are certain men that God has empowered with the ability to disciple people and bring about national transformation, which include, but are limited to Apostle Arom Osai, Apostle Joshua Selman, Apostle Orokpo Michael, and many more. These disciplined men of God have been chosen from backgrounds that are nameless and faceless to kickstart this move of preaching about revival, casting demons, and bringing redemption to the body of Christ and also national transformation. Unfortunately, and somehow they had a rift that lasted for over three years, and we are glad to say that at this point it was confirmed by the spiritual father of Apostle Arom Osai that the rift is over. This groundbreaking news was confirmed by the spiritual father of Apostle Arom Osai on his social media platforms a few minutes ago. We have prayed, we have wailed, we have fasted for this day to come that the pioneering fathers of African revival shouldn't be in a rift so that it does not affect the body of Christ and make us lose our focus, lose our mandate, lose our heritage and our inheritance. Sincerely speaking, I cannot explain how I feel right now seeing the Apostle Arom Osai and his son Apostle Orokpo Michael in one picture after such a long time. This is, you know this young man, he's Roko. So yesterday somebody got your recording and, and sent to me and said, who is this from, from UK? Say, who is this young man? He says, my son. Say, oh, no wonder. Now, the point is, how were you listening to the message? Because my spirit, you have inherited it. What did you do? <laughs> Thank you, sir, for the opportunity. I, I came here in 2014, March. When I... <laughs> it's difficult to start close. <laughs> yes, so um, I got in, you were given a charge the way of the fathers. We are talking about the father. So I was thrown aback. And when I went home, I started an eight months fast. And luckily I was at home at the time. Just got back from service before enrolling for masters. So I had all the time. I was listening to the messages for over eight hours every day, for eight months. Nobody said you should listen to it for two hours, for 30 minutes, for 45 minutes. He now said, for eight months, he was listening to messages for eight hours. So, you see, the system provides for you to decide how long your master's degree will take, how long your first degree will take. And as he followed it that way, he received the inheritance. We're not talking about the methods. He received the very spirit that is responsible for the transmission. Hallelujah. Yes. Okay, and I was praying. I came for, we're having three hours prayers every day here. Luckily, when I got here, it was week of prayer. Reverend Donatus declared 14 days prayers. So I, that was when I came in. So I joined the prayers for the first time. I was stretching from morning to evening for like 14 days. I have never done that before at the time. So after I left the place, I discovered that my prayer energy became higher. So on my own, at home, I could pray for five hours. I could pray for seven hours. And everybody I spoke to literally began to cry. I didn't know simple scriptures I knew at the time. I would share them. People started crying. What is going on? And then a hunger for fasting followed up. And then I just, that was when I realized it's not based on principles and laws alone. There is an energy within you to know that in an apostolic setting, you determine how long your first degree will take, how long your master's will take. You can say, okay, you want to do the master's in, in, in four months. For those who don't know who Apostle Arom Osai is, he is the founding father of the Remnant Christian Network, a ministry that strives for the rebirth of apostolic Christianity around the world. This is evident in the way he teaches about revival, discipleship, purity, and holiness, which are the core cardinal focus of the Christian faith. It's undoubtedly true that he has disciplined some of the finest and anointed ministers of God in Nigeria and around the world, namely Apostle Orokpo Michael, Apostle Edu the Winlows, Pastor Theophilus Sunday, Prophet Joel Ogibi, Apostle Philip, and many more. It is a win for the body of Christ to be able to see that Apostle and Apostle together as father and son, 
Kindly say a word of prayer for them in the comments section below. Please do not forget to subscribe and turn on notifications to be up to speed with the matter. We will be uploading more content on the story. We will be dropping other videos around this issue. God bless you. The third one happened about three years ago. Okay. Where I was having a lot of controversies, came out, people lied, said a lot of things, and so many things went sour. I defended myself, I apologized, I begged. Four times I went to lay down to bed. This is not so hard to explain myself yeah. and everything. And things were around. And I sat down. I said, in the course of this service, now when my brother died in 2017, yeah. my brother died on the 18th. On the 19th, I still went back to the Bible school to do a partition. <laughs> <laughs> That's to give you an idea of the level of service. Mm. I didn't receive the grace because God was biased. My heart was genuine and mm -hmm. I served with all my life. Mm. My brother died. I was broke. I didn't even shower. I was the one who went to take him to the mortuary. Because he died around 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. And then I returned back the next day to still do his partition. Because that week I was the one teaching the Bible school. In fact, he was in coma for five days. All through the time he was in coma, I was teaching from morning to evening. I'll go to the hospital in the night, sleep in the hospital, come back in the morning. Just to give you an idea, the level of commitment and service. The same means the one everybody's lying against, everybody's talking against. I will go, they will say this, I'll go and need an apology. They will say, I'll be they will say another one, I'll go and need an apology. And it continue like that until everything will around. If I had my powers, I wouldn't have wanted it to go that way. Yeah. I became so bitter, not with the man of God, but with the whole people around. What have I done to you? I so say to all of you, I respect all of you, and every day everybody wants me to go down. What did I do? It broke me so much that if people you call brothers and family, you are talking to somebody, they raise a, a situation, you are explaining your own part, they record it, they go and edit it, take to authority. That is what you said. <laughs> so what can, is this church? Is this the house of God? Oh God. So it pierced into me. In fact, there was a chance it started affecting my, my messages until the Holy Ghost had to tell me your priesthood will be corrupt. Mm. He said, this is revival. Mm. And one of the things that happened in revival is separation. Mm. And he started showing me scriptures. How Paul and Barnabas separated. How they, so it's either persecution will separate you, or disagreement will separate you, or the Holy Ghost himself will come and say, separate unto me. But by all means, there must be separation for revival to happen. Mm. Paul and Barnabas argued because of John Mark. Not because they had problem. But John Mark was the issue. Mm -hmm. In the Jerusalem church, persecution scattered them. That yes. was how Philip went to Samaria. Yes, and in the church in Antioch, the Holy Ghost himself came and said, separate unto me, Paul and Barnabas. He said, so that the many expressions mm -hmm. of the graces that are needed for that revival can find expression. So it's not a personal thing. He's a, this is a man of God. He loves you. I've used him to, to impart your life. You are a servant of God. You love him. You honor him. But it's a necessity for the work of God to spread. So mm -hmm. there's nothing personal about it. The problem is the people who allow themselves to be used of the devil. Yeah. They would have lost so much from God because they have allowed bitterness, they have allowed pride, they have yeah. allowed all sorts of things yeah. to enter into them. And so I now eventually began to pray because I know we are all one in the body of Christ. But that's one very serious issue. And you know the worst part? Yeah. You can't explain yourself in this thing. Yeah. Because the more you talk, the more you are wrong. Yes. So we just kneel down and just... <laughs> you just pray, you just cry, and just ask the Lord to help you. Ah, it's like we're living parallel lives on another side. <laughs> uh, that, that, I was always to bring my brother at some point. I mean, it's uh, always, all as in, yeah. Not yeah. to sense. Yeah. And then, you know, when other pastors are intentionally hoping you fail, I, I still didn't get that. Like, what do you benefit from? And then the set man is put in a tight corner. Yeah. Everybody's saying all sorts of things. And these things are not true. And the set man is taking out of my context. Father. In this case, they are taking out of context. And then, okay. like, watching, you there's nothing. You just feel the pains. You just have to endure the pains. I mean, now in, in our own situation, they will, you, you are not to raise your hand. Permission to speak. It will be like denied. <laughs> So you can't, so, uh, well, anyway, thank you, sir. I mean, you've done, this is confession that you have done, yes, sir. Without knowing, this is full blown confession yeah, that you've done, yes, sir. I, I want to, I want to break it into you. So when you had to get married, what are the things that um, you looked out for? Yes, so, it's a confession time. It's a confession <laughs> I mean, I mean, I have another one after this one. I have another question so, after I, this one. I, I noticed that yeah. um, while growing up, maybe yeah. I was, that is still part of these things we see. Yeah, okay. from the movies, we, yeah. we open to watching as children. Yeah. I discovered that I built an image in my heart. Okay. What people will call spec. Yeah. Probably because when we were growing up, movies we were watching, all the stars will be tall, yeah. fair, yeah, elegant. True. Yeah. So I had this imagery in my heart. My wife will be tall, fair. In fact, I wanted to marry a Brazilian lady. So That's you see that. Yeah. In fact, at a point, I, I I I was attracted to Indians. Okay. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. So, so you're about. Let me guess. You should be in in forties now. I so. was born in the eighties. In the eighties. So you were listening to all those songs. Then, 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 then. Loving this thing. So <laughs> when I wanted to get married, that was an idol in my heart. Hey. So it took God time to break it. Hmm. 
I have to marry his choice. I have to marry his will. But I couldn't. I struggled for a long time. Hmm. So eventually, I knew that as touching marriage, yeah. first of all, my emotion has to be reconstructed. Okay. Because I wanted to marry what I liked, not what not God wanted for me. Yes. And yeah. up until a year or two to the time of marriage, mm -hmm. I was still held into this thing. I had that in my mind. And when you are a bit mentally inclined, you have a strong mind, mm -hmm. it becomes difficult for these things to happen. Mm -hmm. Until God helped me, started listening to messages. And these apostolic messages on yeah. the will of God, the yeah. will of God, the yeah. will of God. Yeah. It was after a while that that strong will began to break. And I remember telling God, okay, whatever or whatever you lead me to, whatever the person looks like, if it's your choice, I know you know what's going on. Holy Spirit me. played with me on that too. When I and said that, uh, you know, whatever you pick, whatever, he played on me on that. Because you don't show me one game. What if, what if I say this one? Uh -huh. And she's limping. Not that, you know, there's an issue with people. Just, just, yeah, just the test. sincerity of your, your yeah, prayer. But yeah. eventually, when you speak to God like that, God will always make something beautiful out of it. Yes, sir. And God led me to, I discovered that my desires began to change. Okay. Because I began to understand a few things more. That's when God taught me that. The principle of relationship is a journey mm -hmm. from love mm -hmm. or emotions, attractions to understanding and then to trust. Uh, run down again so that they will hear it. Love, love. To understanding mm -hmm. and then to trust. Okay. He said you will be attracted to someone, mm -hmm. but after a while you get to discover that what will matter to you more is the degree to which the person understands and connects to you. Yes, sir. And if you get married to someone and that understanding is not there, mm -hmm. even if that person looks like a goddess, yeah. you will discover that. You, a point will come, you might even hate the person. Yeah, exactly. It's not about don't be conscious of the looks. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. understanding wills more on the scales than looks that triggers affection. <laughs> and then he said, the point would even come eventually that you have to become someone with the person that you trust the person's motives. You trust. But lust is usually something that just holds. Um, I mean, the marketing gurus already understand this. You know, any small thing, they are trying to sell uh, toothpaste. They will start making sexual mm -hmm. one way or the other. They are trying to sell engine oil. It will still be one lady holding the engine oil and you're wondering how so how is it best to come out of loss and then also then guard yourself yes that's that's very important there are there are certain arrows that the devil has shot into our generation and lost is one of them distraction is, is another one okay. pride is another one okay laziness and complacency is yeah. another one okay you see okay. so all of these things are arrows hmm. but since you've particularly mentioned lost let, let's deal with it there was a time that um i realized that I was so attacked with the spirit of loss. That was when I actually discovered that this thing was a spirit. That was an attack. Yes, and it was an attack. I used to think people are careless, that's why these things happen. Mm -hmm. And of course, carelessness can make it happen. Mm -hmm. Your eyes, your ears, your skin mm -hmm. are all gates to your soul. If you watch what you shouldn't watch, hear what you shouldn't watch, hear, so, these things can be shot into you. Mm -hmm. But generally, these are arrows shot into this generation. And if you are not deliberately shielding yourself, you can be attacked by these things. Mm -hmm. And I was attacked terribly by loss. Mm -hmm. In fact, it also affected my doctrine. Because I'll teach before and tell people fast, pray and all of that. I fasted, nothing happened. I prayed, nothing happened. In fact, the more I became high in the spirit, the stronger the lost became. Mm. I look at somebody, I want to hug the person, I want to kiss the person, I want to sleep with the person. So what's going on with me? Mm. You see, so this thing was eating into my soul. Mm. It was at that point that I went to God. And it was the cure. And God showed me three things. And these three things helped me. The first thing God showed me is the operation of the law of life. The law of the spirit of life. Okay. That was the first time Romans 7 and Romans 8 made sense to me. When Paul was frustrated, from Romans 7, 20 to 25, Paul identified two laws. He called one the law of the mind or the law of God. And he said, what the law of the mind does is that it, it pushes me to do the will of God. He said, but there's another law in my members. And he called it the law of sin and death. Mm. He said, the law of my members counter the law of my mind. Of mind. So do I want to serve God? I cannot because the law of sin and death makes it impossible. Paul said he was a wretched man. He said, oh, wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from this body of sin? And then he went to Romans chapter 8, verse 1. He said, There's therefore now no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus, yes, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Mm -hmm. He said, The law of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. Now I have discovered that these things are laws working. Now, what do I do? That same scripture now began to open to me. The law of the mind becomes stronger when you hear and see the things of God. Okay. If you see somebody walking in miracles, you hear somebody preach the word of God, you see that the desire to serve God begins to grow in you. Yes, sir. But that's not enough. You must learn how to keep your members because i can come to redemption camp like i've done now mm -hmm. and see the mighty things god is doing through the video mm -hmm. and then i go back and say i must be as big as this what he has done has stirred the law of god in me yeah. desire to do more for god mm -hmm. but if i don't guard my eyes guard my ears and i expose it to the elements of this world my emotions will be activated the power of the flesh will be activated yeah. Yeah. and what you will do to it will choke the desire to do the will of god so paul now told us that it is in seeing hearing what God is doing in the lives of others that will stir the law of God. Okay. However, if you leave your uh, your bodies, yeah. your members, yeah. carelessly, yeah. and they make contact with what the devil is doing, another law will be activated and will choke you. 
So you must always give yourself to hearing what God is doing, seeing what God is doing to energize the law of God. And then you must keep your body away from the elements of this world, distraction, pornography, lust, and all of that, so that the members will not be strong. And that's not even the solution. He said the most important thing is to activate the law of life that is in Christ Jesus. And how does that law get activated? He said to be spiritually minded. He not said to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So what you do is that you program your mind oh, wow. always to stay within the ambience of God. And now you discovered three forces that makes for life and makes for effective living. Number one is the force of the world. Number two is the force of the presence of God. And number three is the force of the gift of the Spirit. If the Word of God is strong in you, the Word of God will keep you. Okay. Because the Word of God is in the Word of God that the law of life dwells. Psalm 119, verse 9 and 11. He said, How shall a young man keep his ways? Mm. Say, By taking heed unto thy word. Mm. So I don't wait for temptation to come. If I'm reading the Bible and I get tired and I discover I'm weak, I look for somebody who has utterance. I go and hear the word from him. I will hear something that will hit me and charge me up. I will hear something that will stir me up. So somebody is talking and he just gives a testimony. How that he went to Zambia and 10 people drop crutches. He hunting awakens in me. He charges the law of life in me. So as I'm hearing it, I'm stirred. That stirring is what mortifies the law of sin and death so that I can do the will of God. Really? And then number two, I hide in God's presence. He said, he that dwelleth in the, the secret, secret place, place of the most high abides under the shadow of the Almighty. So I don't wait places. for challenges before I go there. Yeah. My people here know, I don't come out of my room unless I want to go to the office or unless I have a journey to make. I stay up there for four to five hours every day with God before I step out. Because I know the moment I step out, that day is no longer mine. I'll, I'll have to attend to needs, I have to do something. So I seclude myself for the early part of the day waiting upon the law. Either I go to the office to stay there or I'm upstairs praying and studying or listening to message. By all means, I saturate myself. And I saw that was what Jesus did. Yes, in Mark 1.35, he said, early, a great while in the morning, he went to a solitary place. Because if you are not full of the presence, your members will make contact with the world. So the second thing is to be full of the presence so that the Holy Ghost can mortify the deeds of the flesh. And then finally, your giftings. I discovered something. Any gift you have yes, will demand a consecration. There are those who have a gift that demands worship. So you can just wake up with a song. You discover that you are predisposed to sing. To yeah. It is your gift that is calling for it. That's what feeds it. You find some people, they are predisposed to prayer. Some people are predisposed to study. It is the kind of gift you have. If you are a psalmist or a prophet, in, to a very large extent, you want songs. And even the type of song will be recommended. Yeah. There are those who love soulful songs. There are those who love high praises. Mm -hmm. All of those things are food for the law of life. And then there are those who like high-powered prayers. So it's either you are praying it or you play somebody who is praying it to charge you. Yeah. You are servicing that gift. If you pay attention to the consecration demand of your gifting, the law of life will be strong in you. So the word, the presence, and the gifting is what energizes the law of life. And the law of life is what kills the law of sin and death. And when the law of sin and death is killed, you will be on fire for God doing the will of God. <laughs> These are the things I discovered. Because when lost attacked me, yes, sir. every mechanical thing I knew didn't work. And I went back to the Holy Ghost. What do I do? The Holy Ghost started guiding me. The first thing the Holy Ghost told me, was to start singing some songs and he gave me some ministers. I'll go and collect this song. Yeah. I will pick a dumb one song. I just want to be where you are. I can be singing it and crying for one week. And something was going on in my soul. Something was going on. After a while, he moved me. He said, fast for 21 days every month. And so January, I fast for 21 days. I stopped. February, I begin. March, I begin. He was prescribing things by time. And now I discovered that the Holy Ghost is the one that will lead you to what you will do to awaken the presence. The Holy Ghost is the one that will lead you to the scripture mm -hmm. that will keep you. Mm -hmm. And is the one that will show you the consecration. As I am like this, it's not every song I sing. Most of my songs are songs that are drawn. Some of them sound soulful. So if I'm not singing a hymn, I'm singing a song that will usually sound soulful. Songs that have this South African kind of yeah, melody. Yeah, yeah. As we are drawing it, there's something just to my soul. All of those things I've discovered it. Because that's what my gift demands. That's how I view the presence. And that's how I step into the world. Wow. Uh, I heard that this apostle was into fornication somewhere. <laughs> because when the attack came, it was heavy. Oh, wow. Ah, it was heavy. I go to pray, my mind is noisy. I can't even pray. I carry the Bible, I sleep off. Until God began to help me. And it took me step by step, step by step. But there's an element of patience in that because it is. You know, some people would not wouldn't want to be patient long enough for all of that. And um, in fact, when those those seasons come, you have to be accountable. Bring yeah. yourself under authority. Yes, sir. I remember I went to the apostle then and I told him this was the challenge. Any lady, I say, I want to kiss her. I want to kiss her. What's going on? Well, yeah. you, but it was nice to have someone that you can talk to. If you don't judge you, you. Problem. Yeah. Some, problem. some people will judge you by it now. Spoke in tongues, prayed, cast out that damn demon, and he said I should go. And then this journey now starting. Of restoration. Ah.
Ah. So what would you say to a young minister that doesn't actually have anyone? I mean, there's some people that they just uh, hit. Maybe they did one thing, one small thing. You know, they finally got visa, go to UK, did one program. As is then, they don't even talk to anybody anymore once they came back. It's a terrible thing. It's a terrible thing. Even Paul, the great apostle, in Galatians chapter 2, verse 2, he said, I went up to Jerusalem by revelation. What did he go to do? To submit what he had received from God to the apostles. He says, so that he will not run in vain. Mm. Meanwhile, in chapter 1, from verse 13 to 16, mm -hmm. he said, the gospel I preached, no man touched me. Mm -hmm. I received it from God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in chapter 2, from verse 2, he said, I went to Revelation. To Re the Jerusalem by yeah, Revelation. By revelation yeah. And he said, he saw Peter and James. And he presented the gospel God gave him. It was then they gave him a hand of fellowship. So everybody, no matter how mighty you are, there must be somebody you talk to. If you don't have a father, and I'm not going into that subject now, it's a very complex subject. A, yeah, yeah. But there are those who are in systems that are regulated by the governing system. Yes, sir. There must be somebody. Even our fathers today who are patriots, yes. they are friends that they call. Yes, sir. There's this issue, there's this issue. You must be under some level of accountability. Yes. That's the first level of insurance that everybody has. When I went to Abuja, I had to go and see Dr. Paul. Today, if there's any issue, I did that deliberately. So that mm -hmm. if there's something that I'm not seeing, let somebody be able to call me and say, why did you say this? Yeah. Why did yeah. you do this? Yeah. So that you can also go back and evaluate what you're saying. Uh, so before you say the Holy Ghost helps you, the presence of God helps you, there must be a, a, a human figure who okay. should be able to talk to you. If you don't have, you should be deliberate. Have somebody who you know loves you and who can tell you the truth and is not afraid of your face. 